What's up, Underground? I'm Jesse. I'm Kyle. Tonight's episode is sponsored by Rogue Farm Seven Hops IP. Yummy. Seven Northwestern grown hops for a floral, fruity, if you will, bouquet. Best served in the company of a significant other you care for. Jesse, you said you were feeling like a, a good seven hop, something for a company with a significant other. Is there anything you want to share with us? Okay, so tonight's video, super excited. Um, we are here, uh, it's big night. Been waiting on this one for a while. I am building the new ARC 11F. What's the F stand for, Jesse? Um, fucking awesome. All right, yeah, so front wheel drive. Um, funny story about front wheel drive. Um, not only is it all the rage, but I recently managed to publicly embarrass myself on the Facebook. It, um, it was pretty sweet. Um, where I got, I'll be honest, a little tired and the whole fear missing out and bummed at watching the Awesomatics come out. And Three Racing's got a cool one. And of course, X-Ray's got the T4F and everybody and their brother seems to be having a front wheel drive car. And I'm sitting there on the toilet doing my Facebooking as you're apt to do, and up comes some new chassis on Red RC, and I just couldn't stand it. So I went ahead and shared that on the ARC America, or actually it was the ARC sort of worldwide Facebook page, and was like, bah, when are they finally gonna come out with a front wheel drive car? So that was on Friday. Uh, it came out Monday. What um, was the car that you posted, Kyle? Um, actually, I already know. This is great. This is excellent. Now, I I'd like to stop now. This me too. Can we? Previous little rant that he has going on. This sounds like a lot of excuses, but really in reality, you did a Kyle thing. <laughs> I did a bad. You thing. did a Kyle thing. You posted a picture of a gizmo. A gizmo yeah. is a four-wheel drive car, not a front-wheel drive car. There is two belts, four driven wheels on this car. Yeah. I don't do I don't I brought it up. Cheers to that. I don't refute it. I'm an idiot. Moral of the story, don't Facebook on the toilet, kids. I've been building this thing uh, before Jesse got here because, you know, he likes the challenge, so I figured I better get a head start for him. Um, so we're going to get going. We're going to build a few odds and ends, build some shocks, finish the turnbuckles, uh, and see if we can get this chassis going, and then uh, maybe compare it to the current ARC mid-motor that we just built, um, and maybe even this here to me and Mini over my shoulder. Okay. So, <clears throat> I've forbidden Lyle to build his own shocks. He's not allowed. My name's not Lyle, prick. It's Lyle. Um, right, move on. So, interesting thing about these arc shocks. It shows you in the manual how to build a shock with zero rebound. It's actually really simple, but what's kind of cool, and you probably won't be able to see this in the video, but in this top cap, there's a little dimple. And all you do is you drill it from the inside out using a razor blade or a hobby knife or whatever all you're doing is creating a small hole for the air to escape which allows you to build a shock with zero rebound they do it from the factory all you got to do is poke it thanks arc poke it there's your tech tip of the day folks now that's actually a tech tip. You can actually use that yeah. shit. Yeah, um, um, but the rest should, of this you're probably not going to want to use. We should offer a disclaimer here that any and all technical advice from Shit Show Island is not to be publicly used or and otherwise implemented on a racetrack. Um, and if you do, it's really at your own peril. Cause... Arc as a company does not expressly <laughs> condone our advice either. They want nothing to do with us. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Kyle's going through the box of stuff, uh, trying to figure out a battery holder for his car. He's it's not quite rude. sure. Rude. Not quite sure that he maybe missed it during the initial build. We're talking about the different uh, plastics that he put on his car. He put low friction, good plastics on his car. Ah, the gray ones. Now, not the black ones. So there's a great story here. Not this. Um, about a bad batch of arc plastics. It's your story. You should really say it. I'm putting you on the spot right now. This is great. Makes me laugh every time. You ever have those moments when as soon as the words escape your mouth, you realize that was dumb? <laughs> well, 
So I was in Vegas. I was at IIC. It was a couple years ago. It was my first big race with the ARC. I had the R11 2017. Great car, but it was a brand new build. Um, and I was still kind of working some of the little odds and ends out of it. And I might have asked um, the North American distributor for ARC um, if um, it was possible that he had a bad batch of A-arms, specifically the plastics. Um, because I'll be damned if every time I didn't just barely brush the wall, the whole side of the freaking car would explode and fly off. A um, couple things about that. <laughs> one, I watched yeah. the one and only Ronald Volker tap that same wall and grenade his car, so I felt a little better because I'm no Volker. I heard he's a he's a decent German driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that he can wheel. Can um, he wheel in America? Uh, he wheeled in America pretty damn good. He was free to me. Yeah. <clears throat> also, I may have um, had to have somebody point out to me that um, the uh, axles were sticking out probably about a quarter inch past the axle nuts. And the way that track was built, it's actually uh, one by sixes screwed down to a subfloor. So when you tap the wall, the wall does not move. It is actually screwed, bolted to the floor. Um, so it would just tear the corner off the car. Uh-huh. So it actually ground over the course of the week. It ground a groove all the way down uh, the, the rail on a number of those corners where you were tracking out wide uh, trying to go fast. Um, so back to the bad batch of plastics uh, accusation. It's not an accusation. It happened. It, it yeah. happened. Well... <laughs> I'm the one that accused poor Willie of maybe having a bad batch of plastics. And so he looked up at me kind of like, and he looked down at his phone and he walked off. And everybody. Did he, did he do the Willie what the fuck? He look? shook his head. He's like, I don't know <laughs> why I hang out with you guys. So Willie, I'm sorry. I appreciate you. And your plastics are top freaking notch. You'll notice um, after this car is done that Kyle won't actually have any cars that are in drivable conditions because he's, nope. he's pillaging and plundering every car for bits okay. and pieces. Here's an old uh, R11 rear motor um, pillaging off that. Here's the just built R11 mid motor. Yeah, taking shit off that. Um, my Mini, um, I took the fan off that. My Automatics A700, yeah. I'm taking stuff off that. Jake, you didn't see this. Cover your eyes, Jake. One of the many things I hate about RC cars, aside from maintenance, is building turnbuckles. Uh, There's a special place in hell for whoever designed turnbuckles. Um, and um, I'm terrible at it. Uh, but, amongst other things. Uh, but I have a uh, cool little tool. Uh, it's made by Speed Zombie. They are these cool little 3D printed little uh, little doodads here. I don't know how well you can see that, but they are designed to fit uh, a wide variety of the associated X-ray and or arc turnbuckles. So you pop them on the ends. You can get a couple for the ends. Makes it way easier to grab onto and turn those things. You don't have to get your pliers out and everything else. And they even got this cool little guy that's got, you know, 4 mil, 3 mil, 5 mil, all the different sizes uh, for the wrench itself. And when you build them with this, um, because it's plastic, you're not going to scratch up your pretty turnbuckles. So you just snap this little guy on like that. Give your turnbuckles a couple little twists here and there. Measure them with your calipers. Bob's your uncle. Also, they got this cool little doodad that attaches to the end of your drill. So if you're brave, which I am not, you could put that in the chuck of your drill and put together your turnbuckles in record time or strip them out and completely ruin your day. There you have it. Speed Zombie. Wanted to give you a little plug, buddy. We're looking out for you. Um, but yes, love these. Love plugging Speed Zombie. But... Plugs, I can't say that. Are yeah. So, check them out. These things are sweet. Love them. Cool. Shit Show Island is now brought to you by Ryderberger Pilsner.
imported from Germany. Why is it important that it's from Germany, Jesse? Um, because this car was no. You're. I know where you're. I don't even know where you're going, but I know you're wrong. Okay. No, this car is about as Asian designed to build as you get. So really, um, has nothing to do with uh, Germany or Europe, except that um, not only are our friends at uh, LMI in Europe. And our friends at Hobby Square here in the U.S. are both getting together and putting together a bundle for the R11F, um, which is super cool. I don't have the details for Europe yet. They're waiting on an ETS bundle. But uh, HobbySquare.com, they just went live with their promo uh, sort of bundle for the R11R. Um, what's super cool about this car is it's, it's a kick-ass touring car, but it's also... Um, a lot more affordable than the all-wheel drive cars because it ain't got nothing in the back. So there, it's probably what 100, 125 bucks less than easy the all-wheel drive. 120 bucks. They've got this super cool bundle on Hobby Square for the R11F. Um, you get the kit, and then you can add on any or all of these things to round it out. What's super cool about the R11F is that it's uh, it's a lot more affordable, and it's going to get uh, I think newer racers into the hobby, and it's also going to get people into front-wheel drive. You can click and add on the M Max. McLaren Pico speed controller for the low, low price of $89.99, which normally it's $124.99, so you're saying about $35. You can also add the 25.5 Team Edition motor from uh, McLaren. Normally $65, now $45. That's $20 off. The McLaren little shorty graphene pack, that's the one I'm putting in my car. Normally $72, now $55, so you're saving $17 there. And because not turning sucks, you get yourself a really nice high-end, low-pro uh, expert servo. Um, I have a bunch of these, and uh, by the way, the gear sets for them do not rob you blind. So totally love these things. Uh, how much are those? Uh, normally $72, now $55. So another $17 off. I love the fact that uh, hobby shops are doing this. Make sure to support these guys. It's a great way to save some bucks and get into the R11F. We'll put the link down in the comments below. Um, so make sure to check out Hobby Square uh, and our friends over in Europe uh, when we get all that link posted to you. By the way, the link for uh, the European bundle is not available yet, but they are working on an ETS uh, spec bundle, which should be out here shortly. And the beauty of this is for a turnkey car, I mean, minus your, your radio and receiver and stuff like that, for a turnkey car, ready to go, race ready, six twenty nine ninety five, full boogie. That's a pretty screaming deal. That's your best value. Ta da! Your Arc R eleven F. It's funny looking at a front drive car. I I used to race these a lot when I was younger, but there's, it's it's yeah what seventy thirty weight bias. Yeah yeah. It's like, have you ever picked up a bulldog where all the weights in the front and they fall on their face this thing it's it's all up front it's crazy it's like you're gonna drop the car um but it's a race car i mean it's funny racing front drives 20 years ago i mean this is a legitimate race car this has every bit um of technology on it that the r11 2019 that i have has on it it's just got less stuff it's just crazy how crammed up front everything is i mean there's a motor hidden behind the fan in there, um, you know the diff. Uh, it's I mean, and then in back, I don't know how well you can see that. There, there's just nothing. There's no dog bones. There's no eccentrics. The other cool thank thing you though, in the comments. Somebody told me it was an eccentric. I, I I learned so. Oh, I learned some words. Eccentric. Thank you. Cham Chamfer. I don't know if you can see those in there. This edge on the carbon chassis is chamfered i learned that what's kind of cool too is the rear end of this car has the same parts as the r1119 so spare parts are easy to come by so identical the stub axle is actually part of a stub axle from a cvd you probably have spares in your box the bulkheads they're r1119 bulkheads easy a uh, couple upgrades i did when i built this thing i uh, did all titanium <laughs> screws because shiny um, I also did all the low friction uh, ball ends everywhere. I think, I think that might be the only upgrades I did. In terms of what it comes with, it's kind of like the opposite of building anything to me. <laughs> Sorry, don't mean to hate, but I think I'm going to have to rant a little bit. This is my relatively new M07 concept. 
What's the concept anyway, Jesse? Is the concept to part with more of your money? The concept is to make a mini sort of resemble a proper race car. Sort of. Keyword here. I will say, um, after all the extra work that's been done to this thing, and our buddy Coach, thanks Coach, has helped me kind of get this car whipped into shape, it drives like a proper race car now. You know what it's, it, you know what I'm it is? really happy with this thing. You know what it is? What's that? It's like when you, um, you see those commercials for cereal. For like sugar cereal, like Lucky Charms, mm. part of a balanced breakfast. Part. It's not breakfast. You have to buy all this other shit to make it a complete race car. And by the way, not eat most of the cereal. Yeah. So in Tamiya's case, what that means is this chassis. This one right here, the M07 Concept, was $189. I was like, wow, that's going to be great. $189 chassis. Sweet. And then, you see everything blue? See all that blue shit? Yeah, I don't think any of that was in the kit. And between that and, and the other odds and ends, by the time you're into this thing, and this is what really kind of pissed me off about the about the Mini, you're into it the same as this thing. I kind of feel like Tamiya should sell a kit that comes with the stuff that you need to make a proper race car. ARC is doing that here. Um, so Tamiya, you're not listening. I, I know you're not listening. But if you're listening, please consider selling a kit that puts all of the shit in the box that you need to make the car go fast. Please. So we're kind of wrapping everything up. A um, couple of cool little features that I was looking at with this car. Um, some front drive only features. Obviously, the front end of the car is a lot going on here. Um, it's kind of cool. It's belt drive. I think a lot of the new like front drive cars are like that. Business in the front. Freedom in the back. Literally freedom. What's kind of cool too, <clears throat> they built this car with a really big shock tower for hatchback Huge. bodies. Front drive hatchback bodies. How freaking cool is that? Otherwise, and there's so many good hatchback bodies out there. There's some good ones. Oh, Biddy Designs, Montec, and Protoform. And Tamiya has some really good stuff. ones too if you want full on realism. Um, they got some Bad really great ass. hatchback bodies. Yep. You could even yeah. rock the Toyota Privy. I'm pretty sure they're still out there. It's like a milk carton with wheel arches. Painted purple, like purple? Yeah. If you're looking to round out a wheel arch, please consider Shit Show Island Industries wheel arch sanding tool. <clears throat> Built with A-N-A-L technology. Anodized aluminum technology. You may say, that is just a protoform sanding disc inside of an Intigy hex driver. To which I say, you're right, but we have made the sum of the parts greater. The shaft is long and serrated for your gripping pleasure. And the drum is big enough to... What's that, Cloud? Oh, it'll ream out all the edges. It'll just dance around the rim. As you're seeing them. Of your left hand body. Of the... That too. Coming soon to Red RC. And a hobby shop. And an adult novelty shop near you. I think that's it for this uh, here episode. This was super cool. I'm really stoked to get the front wheel drive car. Um, <clears throat> I've got a Civic. Uh, super badass British touring car. Civic body that I'm going to slap on this thing. Um, we're going to roll it out. Or I'm going to roll it out. Uh, next Wednesday. Be sure uh, to hit the, the links down below for the bundle offers. You can get uh, killer deals and save a bunch of money in the U.S. from Hobby Square and um, Europe from LMI. So um, when the LMI um, uh, offer is up, we'll add that down in the, uh, the, the, the description down below. Otherwise, click subscribe because... Like and subscribe. We're lonely and it makes us feel better about ourselves. Do we? Better-ish. I hate myself. That's why I drink. My beer's broken. Pour your own goddamn beer. We're done. Cheers. Cheers.
Yeah, don't jump the gun. Welcome to no. Shit Show Island. <laughs> Wait until I'm not talking and quiet. Oh. <laughs> and then you can go. Are you quiet now? Yes. Welcome to Shit Show Island. What's up, Underground? I... Try again, because I was fucking sitting down. <laughs> uh, seven Northwest grown hops for a beautiful, beautiful blah, blah, blah. I think it works. <clears throat> no, I Facebook on the toilet all the time. It's dangerous. You do take your life in your own hands. Really. <laughs> I hope that's all. Who's <laughs> <laughs> good, little shark? You're so tiny. You do. You're so tiny. Speed zombie. By Menon. Not a butt plug. Mute your goddamn phone. <laughs> Shut up, Lyle. Booty ping. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> I fucking hate you. Ding. <laughs> Not cool, bro. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and because not turning sucks. Motherfucker, I did it to you. <laughs> See. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh. <laughs> Blah! <laughs> no, that's how you fucking start a YouTube show. <laughs> <laughs>